Hello and welcome back. Today we are dividing real numbers. So we're going to start with looking at the three different ways that a division problem can be written. First we have 5 goes into 15 three times. We have 15 divided by 5 is 3. And the longer version I don't know if you can see the two dots at the top of that, so I'll just redo it. The longhand version of 15 divided by 5 is 3. So those are the three different types of problems. And we have the dividend, divisor, and quotient. So our vocabulary terms for this lesson are dividend, divisor and quotient. Okay, so what's our dividend? Well, well, our dividend is 15 here. It is the number that we are dividing up in the division problem. So our dividend is 15. Well, what's our divisor? Our divisor here is 5 because 5 is the number that we are putting inside of 15. And here when we put 5 into 15, 3 times, it goes in 3 times, it goes in 3 times. So our divisor is 5. And our quotient is basically uh, synonymous with the word answer. It is basically going to be how many times the, the divisor is going to go into the dividend or your final answer. And here our quotient is 3. Okay, so before we get into the rules for division, let's talk about what division actually is. When you're dividing real numbers, division is called an inverse operation. And what that means is that division is the inverse of multi multiplication. For example, let's take 6 times 7. Well, 6 times 7 is 42. Okay? But at the same time, you can take each of these numbers and, and write them in reverse. Write 42 first, write 7 second, and then write the 6. And turn it into a division problem. 42 divided by 7 equals 6. And that is what's called an inverse operation. And this is important because when we're dealing with real numbers and some of them are negative and some of them are positive, we're going to have to follow rules. Now, in the last lesson, we did mul multiplication. So, since division and multiplication are inverse operations, the same rules for like and unlike signs will apply. And let's take a look at how this works. Well, your like signs, if you're dividing two numbers that have the same sign, your answer is going to be positive. For unlike signs, if you're doing division and both numbers uh, have different signs in front of them, your answer is going to be negative. And that's basically what that means. And that was the same, those are the same principles of multi multiplication that we just did. Okay, so let's look at this in practice and do a couple of problems. Okay, we have... A positive 11 going into a positive 99, or 
How many times does positive 11 go into 99? Well, 11 times 9 is 99. So 9 is going to be our quotient. And since both of these numbers have the same sign, they're both positive, we have a positive 9. And positive 9 is the same thing as just writing 9 by itself. So if either one of those you see in the answer choices will be fine. Okay, moving along. Let's do a the fraction. Okay, here we have a positive 63 divided by a negative 9. So we want to ask ourselves, how many times does negative 9 go into positive 63? So you can deal with this without looking at any of the signs and just do a division problem. And when you're doing that, you figure out that, well, it's 7 because 9 times 7 is 63. Okay, and we're dealing with two different signs on our numbers. We have unlike signs, so we're dealing with the answer of a negative 7. And you can check this. And whenever you come up with the quotient or the, the answer to your division problem, you simply check it. Multiply the quotient um, by the divisor. Okay, so... It's these two numbers. 9 times 7 is 63, and they have the same sign, and multiplication says that that's positive. So it would be a positive 63. What did you have as your uh, dividend? You had a positive 63. It's the same answer. And that is the fun of doing uh, inverse operations, is that you, you do the opposite, and you can come up with a way to check yourself. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, 4.9 divided by 0 0.7, or how many times does 0 0.7 go into 4.9? When you're dealing with these decimals and you're dividing, the best thing for you to do is to move the decimal point over enough spaces so that you just have a whole number here. So if we move it over, we have 49 divided by 7. Okay, so um, <laughs> how many times does 49 go into 7? It goes in 7 times. You want to check that? Well, what's 7 times 7? Seven? 7 times 7 is 49. So we have the correct number here. And what sign should it have? Well, we're dealing with two positive signs. So our answer is just going to be a positive 7. And there you have it. I hope you learned something valuable today. And we are going to discuss dividing a little bit more in the next lesson because there are, there are two more terms that we didn't cover. Um, reciprocal is one of them. It's very important to know what the reciprocal is. And um, we're going to do dividing uh, 0. Whenever, whenever you see zero in a division problem, depending on whether it's the dividend or the divisor, there are certain rules you have to follow. So stay tuned for the next lesson. Thanks once again, and have a nice day.